Hey, we're back and continuing our journey to complete the Master Chief Collection. We did Halo 3 last time and this time we're moving on to Halo 4. Halo 4 is an interesting one. It's definitely the redheaded stepchild of all the games in the MCC. It's just so different from all the rest. They changed all the iconic sounds for all the guns, changed up the music to be much more in your face, and changed up the art style which made everything just look a little off. But even though Halo 4 is a very different game, I've still been having a lot of fun knocking out all the achievements for it. In the MCC, 81 of the 700 achievements come from Halo 4, and we'll be going through all of them, so let's get started. We'll start off Halo 4 where every Halo game should start, the campaign. There's 8 levels in Halo 4's campaign, and you get an achievement for beating each level, as well as beating each level's par score. And these par scores aren't really much of a problem if you play through on Legendary, so we'll get started with our Legendary playthrough. Halo 4 starts with these kids in these tiny Master Chief helmets, and I guess this is John aka Master Chief right here. And oh, I guess we're talking to Halsey now, never mind. Halsey's getting interrogated by a guy, I don't, I don't know who this is, his name's Interrogator, so you know he's important. And he's all, oh, Spartans are bad, immoral broken and Halsey's all um no Spartans are sick especially this Master Chief guy he's the freaking coolest did you see him do that sick backflip off that brute that one time and interrogator goes yeah but he's dead and since Halsey got the legendary ending for Halo 3 she goes uh-uh he's alive cut to the forward under dawn four years later where Chief and Cortana are still hanging out after all this time and oh no the ship's been boarded so Cortana decides to wake Chief up and get him back into action and she gave Chief some firmware upgrades which apparently explains Chief's armor going from this to this but she also got some firmware upgrades of her own, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying? So Chief heads on out and comes up on the first enemy of the game, these boxes. The boxes get to jump on Chief and knock him into this elevator where he's got to climb his way up. And I, I guess we're doing these scripted action sequences now. But once he climbs on out, oh, dude, watch out, watch out, watch out. Oh, oh, I guess we're doing quick time events now, too. Also, wait, didn't we have a truce with the covenant? I thought we had a truce with the covenant. Oh, I, I guess he talks a lot in this one, doesn't he? Great. Cortana then explains away why the Covenant are evil by saying, oh yeah, a lot can happen in four years. So Chief starts clearing out all the Covenant on the ship, and Cortana tells Chief he's going to need to fire a nuke off manually since the Dawn's weapons are all messed up. So Chief kicks the missile into place and takes out all these cruisers, uh, oh, I guess maybe just one. But then Orange Beam shows up to give Chief a once over, and then the nearby planet starts sucking everybody in, and Chief gets caught in the suck and bonks his head on the way out. And oh, oh yeah, this is Halo 4 by the way, if you didn't know already. Chief then crash lands on the Forerunner planet Requiem and freaking dies. Until he doesn't. Cortana though, she's going a little crazy since she's 8 years old and AIs start going rampant after 7. But eh, let's just ignore that for now, it'll be fine. What you doing out here with all this ass? So Chief heads on out and starts exploring this new planet and comes up to this Jurassic Park moment. And oh hey, some convenient warthogs survived the crash, so Chief takes one of those and cruises around until he comes across this creepy foreigner building. And inside the building, Chief and Cortana find a cartographer, where they do a search for the UNSC Infinity. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. They can't pinpoint Infinity's location at first until they suddenly can, which apparently isn't suspicious. Infinity's allegedly at the planet's core, so Cortana finds Chief a portal so he can skip right there. But uh oh, some new boys show up to ruin that fun, so Chief dips out through the portal. Chief then gets brought to the portal zone where he says his famous catchphrase. And whoa, looks like we pissed off these Scully Beetle Boys. So Chief does the only thing he knows how to do and starts shooting them. And then eventually gets to this big old beam where he unplugs it. But then the Covenant show up. So now he's got to fight both them and the Prometheans until he can unplug that second big beam. And this opens up a big portal that brings Chief to the planet's center where he finds a convenient Forerunner phone so he can call up Infinity. But huge twist, it wasn't a phone at all. This actually unlocked the big Xbox logo orb and awakens our boy, the Didact. Chief realizes he's in space prank called, but it's too late. Didact grabs Chief with his force powers because of course he has those, and takes control of the Prometheans and the Covenant. And then he just leaves, which blows up the planet's core. Now everything's getting sucked in again, and Chief's gotta zoom through this mini warthog, uh, I mean ghost run to get to safety. And fortunately he finds a portal that gets him on out of there. But what's that? It looks like Infinity's been hit by a plasma pistol, so it's coming in hot. And the Xbox logo's here too, oh no. So everybody's heading out to the Infinity's crash site, and when Chief shows up, the Xbox logo just kind of sits there and growls at the ship. And then Chief takes off into the forest where he runs into Captain Lasky, who's on recon with- Seal her up! Go away, no one likes you. Lasky asks Chief, hey man, you ever like clear an LZ before? On occasion. 
So Chief wipes out that LZ and makes his way to the Infinity's crash site, where we meet Captain Del Rio. Ah. Uh. Del Rio tells Chief to deal with the Xbox logo, so he gives Chief a m, -m, -m mantis Chief blows his way through to the Infinity's outer hole, where he fires a Mac cannon at the Xbox logo, which does nothing. So Chief gets called into the principal's office, where Del Rio says they're retreating, but Chief disagrees and thinks they should go after the Didact. But Del Rio's not having any of that. I'm not willing to jeopardize my ship because of the hallucinations of an aging Spartan. It's at this point Chief is joined by three other hallucinations of himself, and they take this mammoth to destroy the gravity well that's keeping everybody on Requiem. Chief and his boys ride around on the mammoth blowing up these big forerunner guns until a lich shows up and disables the mammoth. Oh no. But then Chief flies up on into the lich and destroys it. Oh man, I bet there's gonna be like a satisfying explosion when it dies. I can't wait. Oh, oh, that was lame. Chief then comes up on a forerunner building where Cortana gets taken away and Chief meets the librarian, the Didact's wife. She tells Chief that the Didact is after a weapon called the Composer and then lets him know that he's the chosen one before giving him the anti-Composer vaccine. She then plops Chief back out on the battlefield where Chief Chief and his boys get back to fighting. Oh, what the heck's going on here? Guys, help me. <laughs> Chief then gets a final lock on on the gravity well and fires a Predator missile to blow it on up. He then gets brought back to the principal's office where Del Rio is ready to leave. But Cortana throws a hissy fit and Del Rio orders for her to be turned off. Chief refuses and Del Rio throws his own hissy fit, which is kind of embarrassing. Arrest that man! Captain. Arrest him! Captain! So I guess Chief's a criminal now, but Lasky's a cool guy and hands Chief a pelican so he can go after the Didact. And holy shit, you get to actually fly this thing? Woo! So Chief then flies around and turns a few towers off until deciding to jump to his own death. Luckily, there's a lich down here, so he's able to hang on with his tiny knife. But looks like the Didact's hopping into his even bigger ship now, and he's taking a portal to who knows where. Master Chief follows the Didact through the portal to Installation 3. But we don't actually get to go to the ring, since the Composer's on this little space station next to it, and Chief crashes into the station and tells Dr. Tilson he's gonna blow up the composer. Tilson's like, B -b -b that's my life's work. But Chief doesn't have any other choice. But all that doesn't really matter since Didact casually swoops in and scoops up the composer and then just downloads everyone on the station. Oh my god, that was brutal. But luckily Chief got that vaccine earlier, so he's all good. So he and Cortana strap the nuke onto a jet and zoom on over to the Didact ship. Chief zooms on through this Death Star run and oh my god, why is the screen so shaky? I'm gonna throw up. Oh. The Infinity then shoots a hole into the ship, so Chief makes another Star Wars reference and barely survives flying through this tiny corridor. But now his ship's all fricked up, so he straps the nuke on his ass so he can deploy it manually. Chief then fights his way through to the Diadax chamber, and oh man, this looks like a place that would have a sweet final boss fight, I'm excited. Cortana has a genius idea here, where she starts cloning herself and then stretches herself into a giant bridge so Chief can get to the Didact. But once Chief gets to the Didact, he gets force grabbed again. But thankfully Cortana's here to save the day and holds him down for us. So now we get to have that sick final boss fight with Didact- oh, wait, that's it? He just- he just dies? Okay. But we still gotta deal with the Composer, so Chief detonates the nuke on top of himself and somehow doesn't die since Cortana puts him in this light orb. And in here, Chief comes face to face with a physical Cortana, and she's able to touch him for the first time. Oh, this is sweet. But Cortana's too fragmented after splitting herself, so she sacrifices herself to save Chief. Chief then gets left in space until Infinity comes to pick him up, and then he grows like two feet taller before he getting stripped of his armor. And then we get the biggest reveal of all. He has eyes. Whew, finally done with all that. Halo 4's campaign was kind of all over the place, so I can't blame you if you got lost during all that, but completing the campaign on Legendary unlocked all 8 of the level achievements, all 8 of the PAR scores, 4 achievements for completing the campaign on every difficulty, and 1 for getting all the PAR scores. Oh yeah, there's also the Lone Wolf Legend achievement where you have to play the campaign on Legendary by yourself, so I had to go back through a second time after finishing up the first run through, but that'll get 22 out of the 81 achievements out of the way. After finishing up the campaign, there's some collectibles and secrets that still need to be found. First up, just like in Halo 3, there's some Forerunner terminals scattered across each level of the campaign. Except for the first level, because why would there be Forerunner terminals on the Forward Under Dawn? It just wouldn't make sense. But there's seven of these terminals that you need to find. They're not really hidden very well, a couple of them are just sitting out in the open asking to be found and a few of them are only slightly hidden, like they'll just put them behind a wall in a room or down a side hallway or even just like right behind you after a cutscene. But even though the terminals were pretty easy to find, they did carry on that really annoying tradition from Halo 3 where most of them are placed right before a point of no return. So like there were a couple times where I'd accidentally walk past the terminal only to have a door shut in my face, and so I just have to replay the whole level again. 
But these terminals do have one thing that makes them infinitely better than the Halo 3 terminals. When you access them, instead of getting a wall of text dumped on you, you get a nice little cutscene. These cutscenes dive more into the didact and show you how he became the dick that he is today. So his story starts a long time ago when the ancient humans were attacking the Forerunner planet. So Didact's all, oh, the mantle says we should take them out and put the humans in their place. So he decides to assault the humans with his Prometheans. But first he gives a nice little hug to his wife before leaving. Aw, he's a nice guy, look. Can't wait to see what bad stuff happens to him, oh no. But at this point we find out that the humans aren't actually here to attack the Forerunners, they've actually been going around glassing planets in order to stop the flood from spreading. And unfortunately, the Forerunner planet is infected already. But Didact didn't know this, so he takes the fight to them and starts wiping them out. And after defeating the humans, he literally sends them back to the Stone Age as punishment and turns them back into cavemen. And then after finishing like a decades long fight with the humans, the librarian tells him, oh, by the way, they weren't even here to fight us. And now that you wiped them out, we gotta deal with the flood now. And he's like, what the, f what? Didact then starts going off about mantle this and mantle that and decides to try to find a solution to the flood. So he starts experimenting on himself, trying to find an immunity to flood infection, but he only ends up accidentally turning himself into a vampire. Whoopsie. So the only solution to the flood he can come up with is the composer which is that thing from the campaign, Rem remember that? And with that, he can digitize all of his Promethean buddies, and then they'll be immune to infection because they no longer have physical bodies. So all of his Prometheans are cool with this plan for some reason, and he launches an assault on the Flood with his new digital army. But this army kind of sucks still, and they get their ass handed to them by the Flood. So the Didact has another bright idea. He decides, hey, the humans brought the flood here, so it's their problem to deal with. So I'll just digitize the cavemen humans and make my army huge. Duh, it's just simple. And this is where he crosses the line with his wife. She's like, what the fuck? I was setting these guys up to rule the universe later and you just come in here and freaking download them? We were just gonna fire the halo rings anyway and wipe out the flood, you moron. So Librarian's all pissed now and blap blaps her husband while he's not looking and then puts him in timeout for 100,000 years so he can think about his actions for a little while. And that's where we find him in the campaign after all that time. I really like these cutscenes a lot more than the terminals in Halo 3. I knew nothing about the ancient humans and Forerunner lore prior to making this, so looking into these cutscenes was a lot of fun. The visuals on some of the cutscenes were a little strange, like whenever Didact or Librarian's face moves, it just looks really strange. Their faces almost look deep faked on, and it's very, like, uncanny. And there's also some weird PS2 graphics in some parts, like it looks like they loaded a blender and just slapped some models in there without any lighting, so the cutscenes look a little off. I don't know, I, I'm, not, I'm not in a spot to critique this, I just thought it looked funny. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked going through these cutscenes, but anywho, there were seven of these terminals throughout the campaign, so that's an achievement for each terminal, as well as an achievement for finding all of them. After the terminals, we've got some easter eggs that need to be found as well. There's only three that give achievements, but I wanted to show a lot of the other easter eggs in the game since there were a lot that I didn't even know about. The first easter egg is right at the start of the game. There's this terminal under the stairs that contains Master Chief's records. Interacting with the terminal gives you this little summary of Halo 1, then Halo 2, and then Halo 3. I guess it's just here to like catch up players on the story if they didn't play any other Halo games. But interacting with this gives you the digging up the past achievement. Then there's this marine on the level composer who's struggling with his mantises controlled. Ah, oh, come on. Who's the idiot who inverted the stick? There's a switch in the options panel you can toggle. Yeah, yeah, I just found it. Way better. It just doesn't make any sense. This thing's a mech, not a fighter. Listening in on these guys' conversation gives you the You're No Chips achievement, and it's a reference to the fact that Halo 4 didn't have the invincible Australian Marine Chips Dubbo in it. Sin sensational! Woohoo! And then the last achievement is a red versus blue Easter egg in Spartan Ops. In one of the chapters from each episode of Spartan Ops, there will be a hidden crate somewhere in the map, and shooting one of these crates will play the Red vs. Blue intro. And that'll give you the Roses vs. Violets achievement. However, that's not actually where this easter egg ends. If you continue to play the level out, some of the radio chatter will be replaced by characters from Red vs. Blue. Probably. He's on fire. Oh, 
There's 10 of these radio conversations across Spartan Ops, and they really helped add a little fun to a mode that kind of isn't fun, but I'll get into that some other time. There's also some other fun easter eggs I forgot were in the game. Like there's these two marines at the beginning of shutdown. If you walk up to them and stand around for a little, they'll start talking to each other. This is a pretty sweet union marine. It's fantastic. Stand near the crates, but don't ever move them. Right. Right. And if anybody even looks at the crates, that's a violation. Oh yeah. These guys are actually voiced by Conan O'Brien and Andy Richter. I remember them making a big deal about being in the game back in the day, so it's kind of weird they've only got like three conversations. And watching the video they made back then, they clearly cut a lot of their fun dialogue, so it's kind of lame. But it's still cool that they're in the game. Look everybody, it's Master Chief. All right, let's hear it from Master Chief. What a dick. There's also this double rainbow that's hidden around this waterfall at the beginning of Reclaimer. And th this kind of really dates this game since apparently it was mandatory to have a double rainbow easter egg in a lot of games from 2012. <laughs> Perfect double rainbow! All the way! <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> the next easter egg is a fun little thing you can do with a banshee on Composer. It's really more of a development oversight than an easter egg, but it lets you fly around with an invisible banshee, which is just really goofy to look at. So once you've cleared out this section, there will be these banshees banshees that fly off into space, and to give the illusion of the banshees flying away, the devs actually shrink them down as they reach the edge of the map. And it's here you can have a little bit of fun. If you fly your own banshee out to these tiny banshees, you can hop out and land on them, since their hitboxes are the same size as normal banshees, even though they're tiny. And then with a little bit of fiddling, you can hijack the banshee and kick the tiny elite out, and now you got your own tiny banshee to fly around with. But since the banshee is so tiny, you can only really see Master Chief's motionless body flying around, which just looks really goofy. Me and Finny were having a lot of fun messing around with this, just zooming around with our T-Pose Master Chiefs. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Go, go. Yo, you can... <laughs> shit, this <laughs> fucking Ant-Man banshee! Holy shit. Another fun easter egg is in Spartan Ops. On the level All the Secrets, there will be a security camera hidden in a corner of the map. If you shoot and destroy it, once you open up this door, there will be a small group of grunts having a little dance party together. It feels like a budget version of the nightclub easter egg from Reach, but I still thought it was cool that they had it in here. Also, these grunts don't seem to care if you like snap one of their friend's necks in front of them. They just keep on dancing no matter what. The last easter egg I thought was worth showing are these hidden weapon caches in the campaign. 343 put out a bunch of riddles for the community to solve, and these gave hints on what to do and where to do it. Most of these riddles boiled down to shooting something or standing around until something happens, and the something that happens is usually just weapons spawning in. Like on Forerunner, you can shoot these towers next to the Didact Sphere thing, and that'll spawn in an ammo crate with some binary rifles and incineration cannons for you. Or on shutdown, if you crouch in a spot for two minutes, a bunch of grav hammers will spawn in. We, we couldn't get this one to work for whatever reason. And lastly, on midnight, you can shoot some beam holes, and a little sentinel will fly on over and pass through the nearby portal. And in the next room, he'll drop some battle rifles off for you, which is kind of a lame reward at like the very end of the game, but I thought it was cool that they programmed him to do that. But that's it for Halo 4's easter eggs. They were way less than Halo 3, but a majority of these I didn't even know about. I had a lot of fun deep diving into Halo 4's secrets, and I hope I showed one off that you didn't know about. But back to the completion portion of the video, there were only 3 of these that gave achievements, so that'll bring us up to 33 out of 81 achievements. After getting all the collectibles in the campaign, there were still some challenges that needed to be finished. Each level in the campaign has a specific challenge associated with it, except for Requiem for whatever reason, I don't know. For the first level, Dawn, we already did it when we accessed Master Chief's records back with the easter eggs, so there's only 6 of these left in the campaign. The first actual challenge was on Forerunner. You need to beat the level while carrying a UNSC weapon on Heroic or Legendary. So you'll start the level with an Assault Rifle and a Magnum, and all you need to do is carry one of those with you all the way through to the end. 
The main problem here is that the AR and Magnum run out of ammo really quickly, and there's no other UNSC weapons in the entire level. So essentially, you'll need to play the whole level with only one usable weapon once your starting weapons run out of ammo. This means you'll need to scrounge around and stock up on light rifles and other Promethean weapons. Thankfully, there's a ton of ammo crates everywhere, so I was really never struggling with ammo. But this challenge was a pretty easy start to the level challenges. It placed a slight limitation on how you could play, and technically it's the canon ending since Master Chief always has an AR in the last cutscene of the level, even if you don't have one. Find us an exit. Don't wait around on my account! After that we've got the one on Infinity. You've got to get through the level on Heroic or Legendary without any marine deaths. You'd think this would mean the whole level, but it's only really referring to this one section after you meet up with Palmer and Lasky. You'll first start off with two marines that you need to defend, which isn't too bad, you just need to keep a close eye on them in the first section and make sure enemies don't sneak up on them. But after this first section, things get a little trickier. They give you four more marines to defend, and then throw waves of enemies at you. This is where I struggled a little because the marines kept catching stray bullets and dying while I ran ahead to clear the enemies out. But after a few tries, I was able to get them safely to the other side where you have that final defense section. And all you gotta do here is make sure these knights get taken out first because they'll mess your marines up. And after that, you can just clean up the rest of the crawlers and you'll be good to go for this challenge. Reclaimer's challenge is a bit more lame. You need to destroy four wraiths using your own wraith. And you can do this at either the beginning or the end of the level. I prefer doing this at the beginning because it forces you to get a little creative. So to start, there will be a wraith in the first section of the level, and you just need to hijack this so you can use it to kill more wraiths later on. But now all you gotta do is get to those other wraiths. And conveniently the mammoth has a nice little back door you can park your wraith- oh. Oh, okay. The wraith's a bit too thick to fit inside the mammoth, but if you spend a little while punching the wings off of the wraith, it'll fit almost perfectly through the door. And once you're in, you can just chill for a little as the mammoth brings you to the rest of the level. And once you're there, you can pop on out of the mammoth and start taking out the other wraiths to finish up the challenge. Moving on to Shutdown, I thought this was going to be something cool with the pelicans since those were such a big wish fulfillment thing in this game, but nah, you just gotta trick a hunter to fall off a ledge. And there's only two hunters in the level, so you really only have one option here. And all you gotta do is just get like a concussion rifle or some grenades or a fuel rod gun and just blast these hunters off the edge using those. It's pretty easy, especially if you turn on cowbell. And that's it for shutdown, I was quick. And on to Composer now. It's another hunter one, weirdly. You need to take out both hunters on this level with a sticky detonator. About a third of the way through the level, there will be a pair of hunters in this circular room. And there's a bunch of sticky detonators leading up to this room, but if you don't have one, there's one on the back wall you can nab behind the hunters. And all you gotta do after that is just shoot them and kill them, and this one's pretty simple. Our last challenge on Midnight was just the worst. You gotta kill three crawlers, these little dog guys, with one grav hammer hit. The easy part of this is getting the grav hammer, at least. It's just hanging out front and center in this armory section, and you just need to bring it with you into the next section where there's a bunch of crawlers. And I tried my best to herd them together so I could have the best shot at hitting all three at once. But dude, these dogs do not like grouping together. Like, you'll see three of them together and you run at them and then one of them just takes off, separates from the group, and it, it just sucks. And then even when you get them together in a group of three, like, you'll run at them and hit them, and then one of them survives the hit, which, ugh, it's so annoying. But after like 20 tries of this, I eventually got a lucky group of crawlers that stuck together as I ran up and smacked them. And that was it for this challenge. And that'll wrap up the campaign challenges. There were six of these here, and they range from lame to kind of fun to just tedious and annoying. But for the most part, I had a good time doing these. They, they're always fun to change up the way you play through the campaign, especially running through it for like the fourth time. So I, I had some fun with it. But there are only six, and that'll bring us up to 39 out of 81 achievements. Next up, we've got the multiplayer achievements. There's two of these, one for playing four different game modes, as well as one for playing on eight different maps. This was actually really fun. I had never touched Halo 4's multiplayer before, so it was a brand new experience for me. One of the highlights for me was Escalation Slayer, which is essentially gun game. I, I kinda accidentally ruined some people's days having too much fun in that. Uh, Infection's really cool. You play as the Flood instead of the zombies in this one, and they got all their creepy noises like... <laughs> But you get to zoom around with the thruster packs and launch yourself at people trying to infect them, so I was having a lot of fun with that. 
I was also having a ton of fun with the normal modes like King of the Hill and Slayer, but Halo 4 is so much more fast paced than Halo 3's multiplayer. I can imagine it got a lot of flack for the changes it made with all the weird custom loadouts and Spartan abilities. I mean, Reach kind of did the same, but Halo 4 pushed it that much further, which may have turned some people off the game. But I personally really enjoyed playing it. It's aged really well, and the fast-paced gameplay felt natural given that most shooters nowadays are all about zooming around the map. I only played a few matches, but I'm really eager to play some more in my free time. But for now, that'll finish up those two multiplayer achievements, and there's only a couple left to knock out real quick. Real quick, we've got the playlist achievements. These are the same as last time. There's one for completing one playlist and one for completing three. And just like last time, I got the first playlist done when I finished up the Legendary campaign. And then for the other two, I just did the Covenant Threat playlist and the Tight Corridors one, since those were the fastest to complete. And then lastly, ending on a kind of lame note, our final achievement for this video is the always fun play a game on the game's release date achievement. And Halo 4 released on November 6th, so all I had to do was play on the 6th, and god, god damn it, I missed it again. <sighs> I ended up cheating again on this one, and set my date and time to the 6th, and then all I had to do was boot up a game of Halo 4, and boom, easy achievement. And that's all for this video. This will be part one of maybe three or four videos on Halo 4. I've still got to go through the Legendary speedrun, Spartan Ops, and finally Lasso. I was going to do the speedrun and Spartan Ops in this video, but I ended up having a lot of thoughts on both of those, so I'll be doing them in a separate video. But that'll be it for now. We're more than halfway done with Halo 4, but there's still a lot that needs to be done. But as always, thank you for watching. I always appreciate it, and I hope I was able to show you something new about Halo 4. I've had a lot of fun deep diving into every corner of this game, so I hope that showed in this video. But thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.